Welcome to Don't Quote Me On That. One day we will have an intro, but today is not that day. Hello, I'm Kalina. And I'm Eleanor. And this is Don't Quote Me On That, where we kind of talk about everything. Mm-hmm. Um, today we're doing one of my favorite things, where um, I pick an internet thing and then talk to Kalina about it until her ears fall off. It's one of my favorite things, too, because I don't have to prepare anything. There's no notes. I just I just kind of show up. <laughs> I'm in my bed right now. <laughs> that is great. Um, I will be honest. I... I don't have notes. I have one timeline mocked up. Um, I guess that counts. But like for the most part, this is just, um, we're talking about an internet personality that I've kind of been obsessed with for a little while. Not in a good way, but also not in a bad way. Um, uh, Their name is Trisha Paytas. Uh, They have been on YouTube since... 2007 which is forever uh they have some songs they have a book they had a podcast for a while uh they were on ellen they were on america's got talent kind of a kind of many a, things a, pick, a jack of all like, trades if you will pick like three things dude that's so many things um they, oh, they were also on an episode of My Strange Addiction. This is getting worse. <laughs> I already don't want to be here. I know I said I like these, but I've changed my mind. I'd like to... Um, can we talk about something else? Uh, no. Yeah. All right. So, when they, I think it was America's Got Talent they went on. This is, I think, one of the first times I heard about them. They went on America's Got Talent, and their talent was talking quickly. I do that too. You're not special. Um, you know, that's what I thought, <laughs> but <laughs> it has what worked out. What did the out. judges think? <laughs> um, so here's the thing. They didn't actually, um, like go on in order to like have a talent. Mm-hmm. What happens is they just really lo- yeah america's got talent um they were in love with one uh by in love i mean obsessed with one of the um the judges i think it was howard stern but i'm not 100% sure so literally there's a video of them just talking really fast and then crying and then saying that they're only there to talk to uh whoever the judge was and then the judge got up and hugged them But shockingly, I I actually, I don't know how America's Got Talent works. I don't know if like it's a, like a, like a singing show where it's every episode more people or like you get all the people in the first episode or if it's one of the things where like at the end of every episode you pick a winner. Either way, they did not go to the next round Um, because shockingly, being able to talk quickly (laughs) While that might be impressive to some. Listen, if you just stand in a room with me long enough, you won't find it impressive anymore. (laughs) No. Actually, I think... I find it annoying. Kalina's talent could be how slow you can talk. Because you can drag a sentence out for for quite a while. You think so? Yes. I think it's mostly because... um, I don't know. When you're talking, I shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's my few moments of peace. So I, have to, I have to stretch it out as long as possible. <laughs> I make an effort to talk very slowly here, but I know it doesn't always work. And sometimes I like, I don't think I talk that fast, but sometimes I catch myself and I'm like, hmm, that doesn't sound like English to normal people. <laughs> um, that was. And were they a... already famous at this point? Oh, not famous. Okay, like, were so... they already like. This was 2010, so they'd been on YouTube for about three years. I wouldn't say famous, but I w- I would say like fairly well known. Okay. Um, they went on the Ellen Show, 
uh, to do like the the official record breaking event of them trying to set the world's record for speed talking, mm-hmm. which apparently is a world record. Uh, unfortunately, um, not held by Trisha remember, Paytas. Remember our um, theory that like if you get specific <laughs> enough, you could break any world record. That's Eleanor and I's like game plan. Is just get like oddly specific about the thing you're doing, and you'll probably be world record breaking. Probably, I think um, Trisha Paytas might currently hold the record for um, person who's done the most. I mean, yeah, really. They there's about twenty times they should have been canceled, and about thirteen where they actually were, but then they keep just. Yeah, that's why I'm confused by them. I, the only thing I know about Trisha Paytas is that every once in a while, their name circles around on the internet because they did something stupid. And, like, I get, like, like on the, the internet, I guess, it's, it's both very forgiving and not forgiving at all. But, like, people get canceled all the time and come back. But, like, this person, like, every time I hear about them, I'm like, didn't we just go through this? <laughs> did we not learn our lesson the first time? And also the second time and also the 50th time? You you'd think, I think part of it is that they're a, a self described uh, troll, and so it's I think there's a, a lot of people on the internet who just go oh th- you know this is just the newest character that they they don't actually mean anything they're saying. Okay. They're just you know you're getting they're getting the attention that they want, but like I think enough attention is enough i think there's a point where it's like you know what i get it yeah and like even if they're a troll that's kind of like when people are like oh my god i'm just brutally honest but like they only focus on the brutal part it's like at a certain point after 50 million because like you can be a troll naturally Mm -hmm. but also if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and like showing no remorse and clearly aren't learning from it, because being a troll isn't a good thing. Like you could be like that, but like it's not a good <laughs> thing. But if you keep doing it over and over again, at that point, it's like you just you're. It's like you're just doing the stupid thing and then being like, "Oh my god, it's not my fault." Even though it's your fault, you're just coming up with an excuse as to why it's not your fault. They actually they've toned down. I know it doesn't seem like they've toned down based on everything in the past, like two, three years specifically, but back, I'd say before around 2013, they, they were like in a contest with themselves to see who could say the most stupid thing on the internet. (laughs) And you Um, always win that one. You mm -hmm. can't lose that contest. No. They went on My Strange Addiction because they were addicted to tanning. Uh, Clean and I have seen some bad tans. (laughs) Clean and I lived in Ireland together. Um, all of Ireland and, would be on that show. Uh, while we had fun, some of you guys look orange, and I think you need to... At some point, it's blackface. Um, my my thing is, right, like, I don't agree with tanning to the point where, like, like there were some girls we saw who were darker than me, and I don't know if anyone's seen me, but, like, I'm, and, like, I'm not the darkest, Clinton to be fair. Is, Yes, but, like, you're not... But, like, darker than the demographic blood. of Ireland. Yeah. Y- y- then, you're not Irish who we know what kind of sun you get and that is n- none. That's my thing. So like, okay, one, I have to decide, is it the being orange or is it being so dark that you look darker than me is worse? But also like my thing is you live in a country where like everyone who's in Ireland knows the sun is not there. We know mm-hmm. it's raining. We know it's not sunny. We know you didn't get that tan naturally. So I don't get why everyone's obsessed with looking tan because we all, we all know you're not getting tan. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's, it's, you know, one thing. I think part of it is, like, for me, um, it's more in, like, you know, ele- like, early elementary school. People would come back from their, you know, spring break trips to Mexico, and they'd have those really tiny braids with the beads at the bottom. And, you know, they'd be flaunting it, and they'd have a sunburn, and they were just the coolest things on two That's legs. That's just what I look like in like, elementary <laughs> school. That's what I look like. <laughs> Every two weeks, my mom did my hair, and I got to pick the beads, and I had some that looked like dice. And That's very so fun. cute. Yeah, they're fun. I like them. She she won't put beads in my hair anymore. Like, when I ask, she's like, "Clean out, you're an adult." I'm like, "Yeah, but they're fun." No, you should do that. 
You I'm really sure should. You should bring it back. Ones. Look, spring break. We can go to. We can get one of those temporary ink tattoos that they get on the beach. You can get one of the the bracelets with your name on it. Um, uh, and then you yes, can I get find one of those. <laughs> they make them. I have oh. two or three. I. Um, unfortunately, I, well, not unfortunately, but it, it was kind of fun. We used to go to Mexico for a little bit in the summer every year. I was never, um, the, the kind of bead braid person, mostly because I can't handle when people, uh, touch my head. I tried to do Eleanor's hair once and I contemplated never speaking to her again about five minutes in. Yes, it was, it, it, I think it was one of our first big, uh, friendship ending moment we got we got close there for i like for a tried bit. to comb her hair and she was that i was like listen you comb your hair i'll come back when that part's done mm-hmm. so that's that's the rule now is eleanor's got a brush i just do like the <laughs> application and then i leave i don't do anything else yeah when i was a kid i had to have my hair um my hair was about an inch or two long all the way around because I wouldn't let anybody brush it because it hurts so bad to brush. So I'm just a wimp, I think. But anyway. Bra- what were we talking Oh, tan. Anyway. Tan. <laughs> Crazy people. Crazy people. It's, yeah. Although, I will say, um, you said that Trisha Paytas was addicted to self-tanning. Now, were they were like self-tanning in a booth? Because the thing in Ireland, yeah, it was self-tan like- in but for the most part, most people don't use the booth. Like I've seen one, I've seen one in town in Limerick, but everyone uses like the spray tan and the glove, which is just way too much. Just too many steps for me, also. Yeah, I. That's like a whole process. Queen and I, don't I get were it. talking to one girl, and she was talking about like her whole tan routine, and like she. The, the, it's a whole like day event, and yeah, I don't have do the patience for that. You gotta do it a certain amount of time ahead of time. You gotta like shower and let it set. You have to like. like can just... you imagine trying to match up your tanning schedule to your hair washing schedule? Like I know <sighs> no. you and I are probably a little bit more weird about like being so specific with our hair washing, but like yeah, I already have too many factors. It's mm-hmm. like. <laughs> Anyway, Trisha Paytas, tanning, Trisha Paytas, <laughs> tanning addict. Um, so like they were doing some like reality TV stuff to kind of make the brand. Um, they were also just say they would just say things online. That's also like the weirdest or, brand to like. Mm-hmm. Like if you take the Kardashians right now, I don't. I'm I'm not well versed in the Clint, Kardashians. Just just, like, just real quick. Um, I'm not at the weird stuff yet. I I know, and I don't want to keep interrupting you because I want us to finish this episode. But like, I feel like like going on reality TV like that is weird to make a part of your brand if that isn't how your brand started. You know what I mean? Like the Kardashians, I think. Oh, obviously they weren't like on reality TV, but like that's what they're known for. That's their big thing. That's Mm -hmm. they built and and they built off of stuff like that. Whereas like to be on the internet and making little videos about yourself, and then you're like, oh, you know what? You know, it's really, and like, I think when you're on the internet, you curate your audience and, you know, it's a bit more, you can be a bit more niche. Whereas Trisha Paytas is like, oh my God, I did this and I'm insane. So let me go show this to the masses. Cause like, mm-hmm. I don't think the people who are like following Trisha Paytas on YouTube and then the people who are watching reality TV, actually, you know what? Maybe they are the same people. I yeah. I, I mean, I might have it, regress on my people who, uh, you know, take in trash content aren't mm-hmm. very discerning but anyway here's the crazy stuff just well just just a snippet of like the early crazy stuff um there was a whole scandal because they um were i guess there's a word for it now the word would be asian fishing um Mm -hmm. but like not even like you know how this is gonna sound bad but like you know how sometimes like especially like younger white kids they do it just because they love anime or, like, they have a genuine appreciation for the culture. They just don't know how to show it. It's just a little misguided, a little mm-hmm. misplaced in enthusiasm. Uh, so Trisha made um, an alter ego that was a Japanese pop star named Trishy. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, and this if was when they Trisha were... I never Trisha name again, it would be too soon. Well, we're talking about Trishy now. With two eyes. Well, a three total. Two at the end. <laughs> okay. Um, so just imagine 
the whitest woman you've ever seen. Uh, baked to be the most orange person you've ever seen. And add on top of that, just like the most offensive Japanese pop star get up you could imagine. It was a trip. And then um, they got, they, they, they went on a whole thing about how they didn't think dogs have brains. Um, I, you know how like we joke all the time that we just like on, on the show, we just like say stuff and let the and mm-hmm. just let that happen i take mm-hmm. that back i, I don't want because this person just <laughs> says like like if i'm if i met someone and they were like totally normal and then they were like actually i don't think dogs have brains i would think that was weird but like i everyone's a little weird and like everyone's everyone can have thing. like three or four things that they're like super yeah so I'd be like, that's kind of stupid, but like, whatever. If that's what you believe, like, it's not really harming me. But this person just has like 50, I think, I think Trisha Paytas just opens their mouth mm-hmm. and Doesn't even stuff. think, just. And I, and I don't think we do that. I don't, I don't, I think what we're doing by comparison is like very well researched. And Highbrow like, content. And supported. Academic, okay? Oh, they were in um, an Eminem music video. Maybe that's where you know them from. I I can't. Uh, I don't I can't. want to do this anymore. Oh, okay. Um, just real quick. Tough. Uh, right, they were in what the We Made You. Don't answer that. No. Nope. The, the yeah, We Made You. <laughs> like, no. Yeah. Um, and they played Jessica Simpson. I will never listen to that song again. Sorry, Eminem. Side note, I don't know how long after this <laughs> you all will hear this, but if anyone saw the suit, this first of all, this is the only Super Bowl halftime show I have ever seen in my life. And it was lovely. And I'm a little embarrassing, but I really do. Like, I never think I like Eminem as much as I do. Also, I didn't realize how much I liked Eminem until I met Eleanor, and then she pointed it out to me. Um... And then also the fact that Eleanor knows all the words to lose yourself now, not because she's ever listened to that song. It's just I listened to the song and recited now, I've so only often. ever heard the song, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but like I was watching the Super Bowl halftime show and I was like, I really just love Eminem. <laughs> I was rewatching Eight Mile. I just, ah, what a guy. Okay, moving on. I feel a little better. But I've never okay. listened to We Made You ever again. Okay, that's fair. Um, they were also on our favorite show, Dr. Phil, on a segment about um, how girls bash girls who dress sexy. I can't have a productive conversation about Dr. Phil. <laughs> um, and then around this time, so around 2013-ish, Trisha Paytas was like, you know what, actually... I've been dumbing myself down and I've just been saying anything in order to get clicks and get views and get likes and I'm going to start being more true to myself. Okay? (laughs) You know what that sounds like, dude? It's one of my favorite SNL bits. It's when um, Pete Davidson comes out and he's talking, this is from a couple years ago, he's talking to Kanye and he's like, (laughs) Kanye's like, this is me without the meds and Pete Davidson's like, take them. Yeah. If no shame in that game. Was like, you're getting the real me. This is me without the meds. I'd get off the plane. <laughs> That's what that sounds like. A little bit, yeah. Um. And then there was. Uh, this is when they started putting out songs, and their first book was published in 2015. They have more than one. Yes, Someone actually, heard them talking and was like, ooh, we sorry, can do that. Sorry, 2013, somewhere. their first book. It's called The History of My Insanity. And then their next book later that year was called The Stripper Diaries. <laughs> that's, that's me and Eleanor. <laughs> so <laughs> <decide> who's who. <laughs> um, their first song in 2014 was called Santa Baby. 
And then there was um Is it was, like is it like regular Santa Baby or did they just write a new song and call it Santa Baby? No no it was it was just a cover of, of regular okay, Santa good. Baby. Good. I don't know if that's and better or worse, but then in two thousand fifteen there was an album called Fat Chicks. And then also in 2015, there was an album called Superficial B Word. Um, and then also in 2015, there was an album called Under the Covers. A lot of these just sound like they took things people called their names <laughs> in middle school and then just put <laughs> <laughs> it on out. And I was like, that's my brain. Uh, my favorite albums, album names, uh, uh, 2017's Chicken Fingers and Lipo and 2018's Chicken Parm and Heartbreak. One of those is Kalina and one of those is me, but we're not going to say who. Can you tell me after? Because I'm also not sure. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, after doing the straight up kind of trolley content, Trisha started to diversify. Um, This is also when collabs were really big. So there was a pretty big friendship with uh, Shane Dawson, who... We all know has is still well respected and loved and has never done anything wrong. Uh, if I, you know, I just have a lot of opinions <laughs> and they're not nice, so we will move on. Um, and so really, there I, there weren't huge things between like two thousand fourteen ish to two thousand seventeen. I, I I don't recall We're any only like halfway through this adventure. Yeah. Timeline wise. I I mean obviously there were things that there, there was really the only big thing was there was they were in a relationship with somebody and then they had a fairly public breakup and then right after the breakup Trisha Paytas posted a video where they called the ex boyfriend gay. Um ex-boyfriend as far as i know i I genuinely think this person (laughs) just got stuck in middle school they just yeah like every name they were called in middle school that's middle school behavior oh you're gay that's why you broke up with me just they never Mm -hmm. left that (laughs) um also one of trisha paytas's like big things is they sit on their kitchen floor and post hour-long videos of them just sobbing which like I do that, but I only send them to Kalina because I have respect for myself. Well, maybe we're doing it all wrong. Sometimes Eleanor sends me stuff on Snapchat and I think it's really funny. I'm like, you're supposed to on TikTok. So maybe what we should do, right, is just redirect all the content you send to me to the internet and then we'd be so famous. We'd be in business. <laughs> I do save some of the Snapchats I send to you because I, I watch them back and I'm like, this is the funniest I've ever been. We're so funny. We are the funniest people alive. Um, the year after the uh, My Ex-Boyfriend is Gay video came out, uh, Trisha Paytas's best song came out. And I know, I know it sounds like maybe we don't like Trisha Paytas. And I know maybe it sounds like we're being critical. And maybe it sounds like I'm being sarcastic. But their song, I Love You Jesus, is... <laughs> Unironically, one of the best songs I've ever heard. And is that a song they wrote? Oh yeah, it's an oh, original. That's not a song that existed already. I feel like that's a song that should have existed already. I mean, I'm sure the 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 song existed, but no, this one, this one was new. The photo or the the video is just like them walking around a church. It's so bad, and I love it. Is it like a good so song? Much. Or is it so bad, it's good. Um, it's so bad that it's good. Okay. I'd be concerned I, if they put out a genuinely good song, and then the genuinely good song was about Jesus for some reason. <laughs> um, more concerned than I already am. The the best line in it, and again, I know this sounds mean, but I'm also insane, so I am allowed to make fun. Um. There was a time I overdosed and I was lifted, not by the ambulance, but by the Holy Ghost. (laughs) (laughs) Ellen! (laughs) 
Oh, what was... Oh, I... Well, first of all, Lenore's like, not to sound like we're being mean and don't like Trisha Paytas. I would like to go on record as I am being mean and don't like Trisha Paytas. But, uh, I, I have so many thoughts. I don't even know where to begin with them. Um, but now Trisha Paytas has started, uh, um, converting to judaism which we'll get into soon well don't worry we're, we're gonna chug along um i don't have to that's okay so there was also um a a um a follow-up i don't know if it was treated as a follow-up song to uh i love you jesus but i'm pretty sure it's a follow-up song to i love you jesus this is their latest song. It is dedicated to their current husband, Moses. Aren't they and com- the song is His name called is Moses. And the song is called I Love You, Moses. <laughs> <laughs> really dug deep into the idea bank for that one. Yep. So uh, their their musical career is still going on. Um, they are still posting on YouTube. I believe they also have an OnlyFans, but I think it's just, it's it's mo- mostly YouTube that's their uh, career passion currently. Oh, um, I thought you were about to detail what was on their OnlyFans, and I was going to have a lot oh, of questions. no. I, I have seen some. I have seen enough. I have never seen nipples that look weirder. I know we're not supposed to body shame, and it's not their fault, but like... They're just. I don't think we should be allowed to talk about people. <laughs> so, um, in the past couple of years, uh, Trisha's main things uh, were they came out as trans and then um, came out as not trans. Uh, and they came out and said that that they had dissociative identity disorder and then said, um, just kidding. Trisha dated um, a member of the vlog squad, which I think is David Dobrik's thing, um, and had a very public falling out there. Um, Trisha Paytas was also in a little spat with our favorite Gabby Hanna because um, Gabby Hanna told Jason Nash when... Jason was dating Trisha, that Trisha had an STD. And then Trisha was like, hey, not really your place to say anything. And Gabby Hanna said, I'm just being a friend. Which, like, is that what you're doing? And um, if you want more details on why Gabby Hanna is mm-hmm. also insane, we did a video on that, which was the first adventure <laughs> into the series, which I'm now regretting ever oh, letting Eleanor do. Um, so that was a pretty public breakup. And then I am not sure the timeline on this because honestly, I don't care enough to know the timeline. But at some point, Trisha Paytas, um, started a podcast with Ethan, Ethan Klein, who runs H3H3 Productions, who I don't know anything about. But um, they had a podcast, and I don't know if this started before or after the podcast, but Trisha started dating Ethan's wife's brother. His name is Moses. Yeah, um, I don't, yeah, brother-in-law. So, look, I don't know what things are. I keep getting a lot of those, like, like, for some reason, I keep getting Reddit posts on my Instagram Explorer. And I read some of them, and the people do not know how to write, okay? <laughs> they make the most complicated. Like, the first paragraph is me trying to decipher who is involved in the story. They're like, my brother's wife's daughter. I'm like, your niece? You mean your niece? You couldn't just say that? And then they're like, oh, fake na- here's my fake name. I just, just tell me the story, okay? Tell me the people's name. Who cares? I'm not going to go look them up. Brother. Anyway. Ethan's brother-in-law. Um, 
I feel like that's a little too close. You're mixing business and, and funny. You should say that it gets worse. So, uh, um, uh, Trisha and Ethan have this podcast. It's called Fremeny Frenemies, like friend enemies. I'm pretty sure there's also a Disney Channel movie called Frenemies. Thank you. With, uh, Thanks. I was going to say that. Is Zendaya in it? <laughs> yes, with Zendaya. Is that the one with Zendaya and Bella Thorne? Eleanor, I gave you all the information I had. Um, that was actually a rejected idea for our podcast. <laughs> was it? Yes, I was right. Zendaya and Maya Thorne. Or Maya. Jesus. Who's Maya? Bella Thorne. Oh, dude. Oh, um, I, when we did, we did Olivia Rodrigo episode, Rodrigo episode a while back when she released Sour and I was like editing it on my laptop and I named it um, Sour by Olivia Stewart. And I almost <laughs> posted it with that name. I don't know who Olivia Stewart <laughs> is. I don't know where I got Stewart from, but I was just like bebopping along. And every time I wrote her name, I wrote Stewart. And it was like I was going to post the title and I was like, wait a second, this what? looks weird. <laughs> Goodness. So, the podcast. From frenemies, I'm have trouble. Um, the podcast ha- only lasted for nine months. I think it stopped and started three or four times because of different fights. Um, they also brought Was in it nine a months, therapist like... for one episode. Okay, I've got a couple things. One was it nine months, like including the stopping and starting, like a nine month period total. Two, maybe we should do that. Three, how did our show last longer than their show? Um, I like not counting the years before when we were doing it. I believe it was nine months total with some stops and starts in between. I was like, we fumbled the bag pretty early on. Um, I don't think we should bring a therapist in because, um, that's just too much for me. Um, and they, I built the, the end of it was a fight over money. And I think we we've already had that conversation before we have even started to make money with things i don't think we need a therapist for like our relationship i just think we need therapists individually and that's the only way we're gonna get to one (laughs) (laughs) remember i'm practicing my trickle down therapy Yes, I will going just very well. live stream one of my therapy appointments, but live stream in that I'll just tell you about it after. Okay, perfect. Um, so there was a fairly uh, public breakdown in the podcast. I've seen a couple of clips from the podcast. It never seemed that they liked each other or worked well together. So I am surprised it lasted as long as it did. Um, they got yes, into a fight example. over creative control and who was being paid. Um, and also, Trisha called Ethan's wife a C-word, which apparently Ooh. people took offense to. Uh, if you're... But kind of um, rightfully so. I, yeah, that's that's a word that, like, is very... It, it's, it's a slim chance it's going to go over well, and I have never seen it go over well in an American context. Mm-mm. That's, like, like, impossible for that one to work. Mm-hmm. So, their podcast broke down, but they're still technically family because uh, Trisha is now married to the to to his brother in law. I feel bad for Moses. Um. Apparently, Moses um is a um. Uh, uh, doesn't always seek consent um uh, has not in the past with other people so i do not oh, okay we don't feel bad for feel this. too bad i mostly feel bad for um ethan's wife um anyway trisha paid is so moses is israeli and he is also jewish and trisha announced a couple months ago that they were converting to Judaism. And Kalina, I'm not sure how much you know about converting to Judaism. Um, nothing? 
So I admittedly am not an expert at all. I know a little bit. The couple things I do know is Judaism isn't a religion that will like go out and seek new members, if that makes sense. So converting to Judaism is like a, it's a pretty big decision. I'm fairly sure, again, grain of salt, um, I think you have to like seek out a rabbi and kind of prove that you, I guess, have the right intentions or like actually like really want to do it. It's not mm-hmm. like, you know, where if you decide you want to be a Christian, you can kind of pick up a Bible and after a week be like, I'm pretty sure this fits with me. Like it's, it's a, it's a process. Um, yeah. okay. and there was some controversy because Trisha said, I think it was on a TikTok that they were just going to pay a rabbi because the conversion process was taking too long. And like, there are definitely some things where you can pay to have it over say, quicker. That's like a good joke for something else, mm-hmm. but like not a whole religion. Yeah. Yeah. So people didn't like that. And then there was a whole oh, thing uh, where Ethan tweeted something and then Trisha was like, don't tweet that. And then they had just a whole public. Br- I don't understand why all of these. If the look, I don't even know what the whole text thing was about, but it, Trisha posted maybe 20 videos about it, like crying, screaming, throwing up, all that. This like, reminds me of all the tweets I've seen about like Kim and Kanye, and they're like, like the people are like, I feel like I'm in their living room right now. And like sometimes when I see people post stuff, or like, oh, what was it? Someone we know posted something. I was like, I can't wait to see you in three days. And I was like, you can text them that. I don't need to know that. That does not deserve an Instagram post. I do not care. Do you all not have each other's phone numbers? And my thing is like, if this is what is making the cut to be posted online what's happening in private i know and like and these are people especially as some someone who's been online for so long you would think trisha paytas has like a team and some i saw another video that was like kanye west um the girls pretend to be kanye west's like publicist and like the poor girl just wouldn't sleep Mm -hmm. like i have to imagine trisha paytas uh, is the sort that cannot be managed no, I was thinking of, Eleanor was telling me about Euphoria and how um, the guy who plays Fez apparently isn't allowed to watch the episodes because he just would ruin everything. So he'd just be like live tweeting as they're coming out because he's also finding out what's happening. <laughs> like, that's like, that's the kind of thing you'd have to put them on. Mm-hmm. I, I think Trisha Paytas should do that, but with their YouTube videos. I know that's a little bit more difficult because um, th- they have to film them. Oh, oh my they God. Can't, yeah, they I can't haven't be allowed even to know gotten going on their to own the life. best part. Trisha and Moses currently I don't know if it's still happening but on their on their YouTube channel they post together um things called Trish Talks and have you mm-hmm. seen any of the Darman videos like do you know what those are um I've seen Cody Co make fun of them so <laughs> but you know like the general there's always yeah. the moral and they don't make sense there's like so many of them Trisha is not a good actor. Moses is even worse. The, oh my goodness, that's what we should have done. I should have had you watch those. We might have to do that just You're because there's so... You're telling me Trisha so... Paytas, who starred in the We Made You music video, does not have the <laughs> have Oscar-worthy acting chops? It's worth, it's so stilted. There's one where Trisha comes up to this lady in a shopping plaza and it's like, hey, you should be wearing a mask. And then the the girl is just like goes off on Trisha and calls her a racist and says to get out of my space. And the moral of that story was to be nicer to people in public because the old woman was Trisha's mother with Alzheimer's that Trisha was the caretaker of. Yeah, you can't see Kalina's face right now, but I would have to imagine it's what everybody's face looks like. Um, I have so many questions. It's, oh my goodness. I don't think any of them are going to get answered. No, I do not think they are. They are absolutely ridiculous. They're so fun. 
I think maybe we should do that. We I think we're just doing like we're to. creating the wrong content. Honestly, we Every should time start we doing being... these. I'm like we're yeah, Darman 2.0. Well, remember what Eleanor said about how like ima- if imagine like if this is what makes it on the internet. Imagine what we cut out. I think we should just stop cutting stuff out. <laughs> no, we'll get arrested. Oh yeah, no, I uh, we would get canceled off the internet very quickly, but. So has Trisha Paytas several times. That's a great out. point. Um, oh, also, I think last year Trisha Paytas came out as non-binary, which um, I think I, I find that interesting because I feel like a lot of the kind of language that was used in their video where they came out as a trans man really sounded more like they were non-binary and they just didn't like have those words. So, I mean, I'm glad they, they found the right words to put to themselves. I don't think they needed to dress up like Zac Efron in the bet on it music video and tell everyone they were a trans man. Yes, they did. But <laughs> that's on my, that's on my uh, pregame playlist. <laughs> And by pregame, I don't mean like pregame drinking. I mean literally before I have the game, I listen to bet on it. I have bet on it on there. I think I've got um, hasta la vista from Camp Rock on there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was gonna say it just they're like doing so many things, mm-hmm. and not I don't I don't believe this is a good argument or anything. But it's very easy for people to be like, like. Ugh, it's hard to think of an example that doesn't sound bad but like let's say um it is but like let's say a a gay guy kills someone right and then every single homophobe in the world is going to be like Mm -hmm. oh my god this is why you can't trust oh absolutely yeah and like and like trisha paytas is entitled to their identity and if that is truly what they you know what they are and what they believe and what they're going through that's that's not even that's fair that's just what it is there's nothing you can do about that that's you have to accept it but also at the same time i feel like in a less educated person's mind and a less accepting person's mind, they're just giving a a bad name to all of these groups that they've kind of bebopped around to. And some and to some extent it's warranted in the sense that like like the Jew Jewish joke about paying a rabbi. Like that's not that's not great. And if that really worked, and if someone was like, Oh my god, they really did pay a Jew, a rabbi to make them be Jewish, then someone who doesn't like Jewish people is gonna be like, Oh my god, look at these Jewish people, they're insane. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, it's like, not a good argument. It's a stupid argument yeah. that people would be making. But, like, it's an argument that will be made. And I think it's... I, I think it's... Interesting that a lot of the communities that Trisha Paytas has kind of tried to co-opt for themselves have been traditionally either marginalized or, like, not believed communities. Like, dissociative identity disorder. Like, that's a big... Mm-hmm. kind of there's a lot of debate over whether or not it's real and so like it, it's almost i part of me doesn't want to believe that they're doing it on purpose because i think they just do whatever but like if they were doing it on purpose it would be kind of brilliant but in a bad way that like they they kind of pinpoint the the best worst communities to to kind of target because they're already not believed, and once Trisha Paytas is associated with them, phew. it's like and 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 uh, we hope that they're being genuine because again, yeah, them being if they were like masterminding all of this, that would obviously be worse, as Eleanor said. But if they are being genuine, it kind of feels like then they, and like you're allowed to struggle with things. Like it's not like you know. It's not easy. People have to come out and have to muster up courage to do thing, do that and stuff like that. But it seems like they are doing all of this real time on the internet. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And like, as someone, and again, they could be doing that on purpose, even if it is genuine, the things they're going through, they could be real timing it on the internet on purpose. But it feels like, that doesn't seem like something you would do. And it feels like as someone who's been on the internet so long, they would be like, work that out on yourself. And there's nothing wrong, because there's nothing wrong with like, It happens on the internet all the time. People come out, and then a little while later, they're like, "Actually, I'm this other thing." Yeah. But like, they always, they are, they're always pretty, pretty good to say, "I did a lot of work here trying to figure this Mm -hmm. out before I came to the internet with it," because it's on the internet forever. 
it's almost like when people talk about like especially teenagers who are only doing things for attention but it's like Mm -hmm. it's bad that they feel that they have to do that for attention you know like maybe they Mm -hmm. are doing something for attention but that it's definitely like wanting attention is not the only thing driving them to be to be doing whatever they're doing yeah and i just feel like i have to imagine they're making a little bit of money from youtube at this point Maybe mm-hmm. put that money into a therapist instead of allegedly paying a rabbi. Like, you know who? I think. Well, actually, we're therapy. You make money off of that. Honestly, like, you should be going to therapy. Put it behind a paywall. Make your OnlyFans content just be you going to therapy. I promise you, people would pay. And anyway. I would at this point. I have some questions. The best part is that um, I think yesterday, this is going to date us. Sorry, but get over it. Um, Trisha Paytas announced that they are pregnant. With a human baby. That's someone else in the Bible. (laughs) And then Trisha Paytas is going to write a song called I Love You. Honestly, I think we need a third version of the song. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Moses. I love you, baby name. What's a good one? Did Moses have kids? I don't Probably. know the Bible. I don't know their um, names. Here's the best part of I love you, Moses. Uh, I love you, Moses. You freed the slaves and you freed my soul. Moses, never let me go. Oh, this is a dual song about her husband <laughs> and actual Moses? Yes. Oh, see, because here's what I thought. Because you were like, you're not sure if it's a sequel or like a follow-up to I Love You, Jesus. So I was like, ah, she just like made it similar to I Love You, Jesus, but it's about her husband. But it's about both of them. Mm-hmm. Um. Also, they sing in Hebrew for half of it. Which is a choice. Well, I mean, maybe they were going to their Jewish lessons. I don't, I'm sorry. I know that's not what they're called. But <laughs> <laughs> their their, their pre- preparation to convert to Judaism classes. Remember when I was alone, just a queen without a throne. How could I have known that my mind was going to be blown? And it was blown. <laughs> my mind is also blown. <laughs> what could they name their kid? That's not good in the Bible. We must always tip the waiter. Egyptian or oppressed, we must always do our best. I mean, that's right. That is a good They're line. Not wrong. They're making some points. Uh, oh, I think Kalina should write a song about me called I Love You, Eleanor. I don't need to write a song about you. Remember when you were gone and I sent you that song? There's this song by some band called The Turtles or some, something like that. That's uh, yes. Eleanor. And it's like, Eleanor G, I think you're swell. Actually, I and have. Sometimes. Oh, boy. Uh, sometimes I listen to that so I listen to that song when I miss Eleanor, but it's only like once every three months. But I think if I did it more often than that, then I'd be sad. And I don't. I got a postcard. Not that I would be sad. I just me as a person. Would I be a sad person? I got a postcard the other day, and the, the song was quoted. It's, uh, <clears throat> Eleanor, I think you're swell, and you really do me well. My pride, my joy. Well, yeah, see, I didn't quote the rest of the song. It was embarrassing for me. Uh, too bad. But anyway. Anyway. I need to write you a song. Well, you need to write me a song, because I have been looking, and there is no songs called Kalina. Yeah, there is. I wrote it. I just haven't published it yet. I'm waiting okay, for my Trisha Paytas remember, we said about, remember what we said about um, stopping filtering ourselves? Go. What's the song? Sing. I, I can't. I'm waiting for my Trisha Paytas feature. If Trisha Paytas puts out a song called I Love You, Kalina, I'll change my name. <laughs> anyway, that was a trip. Um, I... I didn't hate it. I did hate, like, the facts that I was told, but Uh it wasn't horrible, and Eleanor should definitely give, if you have any more internet drama, tell Eleanor, because she'll tell me. And listen, basically what happens is Eleanor was going to tell me this anyway, so this is my way of making it productive. This way I can trap her instead of having to do it, like, over 300 TikToks over a week, not TikToks, Snapchats over a week. Yeah, and I don't feel like I've lost an hour of my life. I feel like it, it was productive in some way, shape, or form. 
<laughs> but Trisha Paytas, um, closing thoughts. Uh, you know, we should bring this back. At the end of our shows, we used to do, like, a one takeaway because we say a bunch of foolishness. So, like, we tried to have, like, one positive, genuine takeaway. So what is our one genuine takeaway from this episode? Um, mine is that everybody could benefit from some therapy. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say, uh, maybe you see a therapist. And um, if you if you took nothing else from this episode, maybe, like, sit on something for longer than a week before you post about it. Mm-hmm. Also, maybe don't post it. Or just don't post, yeah. But this has been a lot of fun. I hope you all had fun. I had... I had a blast. I was definitely on a roller coaster. Verdicts out on if it was good or bad. I had a great time. And we will be back next week with some more foolishness. Uh, I have been Eleanor. I have been Kalina. And... And this This has been 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 Don't (laughs) <laughs> see you next week <laughs> thanks for listening don't quote me on that one day we'll have an outro but it's not today <laughs>